Welcome to another RoboCell activity, handshaking. In this activity, we're going to take a robot and a mill, and we're going to make them communicate with each other through a process called handshaking. We'll go ahead and start off with an ER4U, and this time we are going to put in a slide base. And as soon as I select the one meter slide base, you'll see I have a whole bunch of options. I'll leave the majority of these alone on this page, but the important one is the peripherals. We need to make sure that we actually drag so grab it and drag it up to 7, the slide base, or we won't be able to control it. Select OK. You'll see you now have a robot and a slide base now floating in the middle of the table. Well, I guess not in the middle of the table. So I'll say General, and I am going to put the table in there. So as soon as I select the table, this time we're going to use a much bigger table than we've been using. So I'm going to say something like 1200 on the X and 2,500 on the Y, so a much bigger table. We need enough room for our mill to sit down here on the end. So we'll go ahead and slide the table somewhere around here. This will be more than enough room for us to go ahead and put on our mill. So if you come to the machines, you're going to see there's a whole bunch of them. One of the ones that I've got the most success with is the ProLite Mill 1000. So that's the one we're going to use for this activity. So I'll we'll double click it. You'll see that I've got things to control, even like the cycle time. Cycle time is how long it takes to actually mill the block, and you'll get to control that. Inputs. This input is the mill telling the robot that it's busy. So it's still running a process, and it gets to do that on input one. Outputs. The first one, the chuck, is what we call the vise. The vise is what we're actually going to hold the block in with. So this is the robot telling the mill to close its vise. This is the robot telling the mill to start a cycle. Select OK. And if at any point in time you forget to put any of that wiring in, you have this little icon up here, this little spaghetti blue, red, green thing. Um, this icon here will allow us to go back in and edit any of those. Okay, let's get the mill set up where we really want the mill to be set up. So I'm going to double click the mill and go to rotate. Negative 90 degrees will face the robot or face the mill towards us. I've already got a couple positions for you that I know will work well too. So I'm going to double click the mill, go to position, and how about we put in negative 90 and 640 on the Y. That'll put it really at a good place right at the end of the robot. So, next thing we need is we need a feeder to hold all of our material. So storage devices and feeder. Um, right now, let's go ahead and put three blocks in there. The biggest thing is make sure you put some in there. But later on, you won't be able to see anything appear. Go to the inputs tab. This is an input from the feeder to the robot that says I have actually a place to block on there and tells us that there's one to go ahead and use. Output is the robot to the feeder that allow the feeder to push the part out. Select OK and place the feeder. Same thing, we need to rotate and change its position. So we'll rotate it 180 degrees and we're going to change its position. The position is actually the middle of this little gray square. So the position is going to be 287 and 0. And select OK. So that's a good place right at the end of the robot. The last thing we need to do is go ahead and put in some type of place down here that we can put stuff onto. And the rack is just a simple black plate that we can put on that's an indication of where we want to put our stuff. So we'll go ahead and double click that, change its position. Let's do a 300 negative 600. Now, the very last thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and put a cube onto the feeder. And you know from the last activity that's really important that we can put it up onto the feeder and then move it onto the gray square. So I'm going to come down here to my materials and I want to make sure that I'm using the right one that will actually run for the mill. We'll go ahead and go to materials. This time we want to use part 4. So I'll select part 4 and place it on top of the feeder, right here on the white part. And then I'll double click it and change its position, the exact same positions I used for the feeder, 287, 0. Okay, so now the block is there and ready for us to go. So we should have our mill, we should have our feeder and the block, we should have our rack and our robot with the slider base. That's all we need. See you in the next video.